Hey, are you frustrated and struggling trying to burn fat? Well, stick around and I'll show you why this hormone could actually cause you to burn fat or store it. Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick. My purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And guys, if you like what we're talking about today, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you click that little bell notification so you get notified anytime I do a video. Well, let's go ahead and dive into leptin and fat loss. Guys, well, I can tell you, fat loss is probably one of the most frustrating things anybody deals with. Why is one person burning fat and I just can't seem to burn it? Why is that person shed it off and I just keep storing it? No matter what I do, I keep storing more and more fat. Well, the answer may lie in this little hormone right here called leptin. Many of you have never heard of leptin, so what is it? What is this hormone that is really responsible for if you store or burn fat? Well, leptin is produced by your fat cells. So your fat cells actually make this hormone called leptin. It is also called the satiety hormone. Why? Because when you have enough of it floating around in your system, you start to feel like, okay, maybe I'm not hungry anymore. Maybe I'm actually satisfied and I don't need, depending on how much leptin levels you have floating in your system, and I will show you how, how that works in just a moment. Long-term regulation of energy, including the number of calories you eat and expend, as well as how much fat you store. So like I said, this hormone right here, leptin, is the key, key hormone when it comes to whether you're gonna burn fat or store it. So how does this work? Well, when your bodies have low fat levels, so your fat levels are low, you don't have a lot of fat in reserve, you don't have a lot of fat on your arms or fat around your waist or fat on your butt, very low fat storage. You also have low leptin, okay? Low levels of leptin, why? Because once again, your fat cells are what makes leptin. So low fat means you have low leptin. Well, that's gonna send a signal to the hypothalamus portion of your brain that's gonna tell your body to eat. Now, why is it telling it to eat? Why do you wanna gain fat? Well, remember guys, our ancestors, it was all about survival. They never knew when they were gonna eat. They didn't know if they were gonna get you a deer or an elk or a wild boar or just have fruit or berries or nuts or seeds. They never knew when they were gonna eat. So for them, it was all about storing energy, storing fat, because you never know when you might have to outrun something, maybe like a saber-toothed tiger, okay? Well, maybe not that, but you know what I mean. They're gonna have to outrun a bear or something. So you have to have energy reserves. Your body will even burn muscle before many times it goes to fat when the body's in that survival mode, okay? So it tells your body then to eat. Not only that, it's gonna tell your body to reduce calorie burning because once again, we don't wanna burn a lot of calories. We wanna reserve, we wanna store, so we wanna bring those fat levels back up. So when those fat levels do come back up, now you got a lot of fat around your stomach, the exact opposite happens. Now you have very high levels of fat, therefore you have high levels of leptin. With those high levels of leptin, once again, it's a signal that goes into the hypothalamus portion of your brain that tells you, hey, we've got plenty of leptin, which means we have plenty of fat. So your body says, okay, stop eating, <laughs> okay? Don't eat, don't go crazy. We're not trying to store because you know what? If you get too heavy, you can't outrun the bear. Well, I don't know if you can outrun a bear anyway, but that's for another story. Burn calories is normal. So now we go back to normal calorie burning and your body keeps it in check. Your body keeps this homeostasis going where you have low levels of fat, high levels of fat, low levels of leptin, higher levels of leptin. And it does this dance all the time, which it's supposed to do to keep your body fluctuating with how much fat it's storing. So where does then the problem come from? Well, the problem arises when you have what we call leptin resistance. Now, some of you have kind of heard this term before when maybe you've thought of insulin resistance. So a lot of our clients being diabetics, you hear of insulin resistance all the time, and that's where your body could have many, many, <laughs> lots of insulin floating around, maybe gallons worth. Well, maybe not gallons, but you know what I mean. You could have a lot of insulin flowing around in your body, but your body's not hearing it. Your body's cells are not hearing insulin, so it doesn't have a chance to really get that sugar into the cells to be burned for fuel, or sometimes if you have too much, it's stored as triglycerides. Well, leptin resistance is when your body does not respond to this hormone. 
and it is now believed to be the leading driver of fat gain in humans. All right. So guys, it's all pointing back to leptin right now. So some of you who are thinking, well, maybe that explains it. That explains how I haven't been able to burn fat. It's not that I'm doing all the wrong things, although it could be. We're going to talk about that in a moment when we get into what causes leptin resistance and then what you can do to reverse it. So make sure you watch to the end because we're going to give you the solution. But you start to see now that maybe your hormones being out of balance, maybe that's what's causing the problems with your weight gain or why you can't lose weight. So it's not always your fault. It could be a hormone imbalance. So what causes leptin resistance? Well, number of different things. Number one, inflammation. Inflammation is probably one of the biggest drivers of disease overall in the body because inflammation causes problems with the arteries to where all of a sudden maybe cholesterol that was not a big deal is now starting to stick into the walls of the arteries and causing that placking, but it started with the inflammation first. So inflammatory signaling in your hypothalamus is likely an important cause of leptin resistance in both animals and humans. So inflammation could be caused by a lot of different things. It could be caused by bad meats, commercially raised meats, where the meats are raised on things like grain all the time instead of grass. It could be bad carbs. Maybe you have some dirty carbs, maybe some dirty fats. You're eating a lot of seed oils instead of nice, healthy oils like avocado oil, coconut oil, olive oil. Okay, you're eating bad fats, bad meats, bad sugars. All of those things, including toxins, can cause inflammation in the body. What about fatty acids? Elevated free fatty acids in your bloodstream may increase fat metabolites in your brain and interfere with leptin signaling. So sometimes too many of these free fatty acids can also cause a problem. What about high leptin? You know, think of it like this. Sometimes when you have so much of something, you almost become desensitized to it. Do you ever think about having, you know, you, you, you love a certain food, but after a while, if you have it all the time, it's like it just doesn't taste the same as it did before. Or sometimes maybe if you're always wearing your glasses on your head and you forget they're there and you're like, honey, where's my glasses? Anybody know where my glasses are? Because you desensitize yourself. You don't really feel it anymore. Or what about this little game? Have you ever said someone's name so many times? It almost doesn't sound like a word anymore. That's when you become desensitized to things. So having too much leptin in the first place can also cause leptin resistance. Most of these factors are increased by obesity, causing you to be trapped in a vicious cycle of gaining weight and becoming increasingly leptin resistant over time. So it starts to create this vicious cycle where you have these elevated leptin levels, you start to become even more leptin resistant, and the next thing you know, it's just snowballing getting bigger and bigger a problem. So what can we do about it? What are the things that we can do to reverse leptin resistance? Well, one guys is avoid processed foods. Like I was saying, if you can eliminate things that cause inflammation and processed foods are one of the biggest culprits of that, you start to realize that there's so many chemicals. If you can't read it, don't eat it. Jack Elaine was quoted as saying, if it tastes good and it's made by man, I don't eat it. And for those of you who are really young, Jack Elaine was like the pioneer of exercise, started up the first health clubs in America and lived to be in his 90s and used to pull boats with his teeth and his friends in the back. So this is a guy who really knows fitness. But he always said, if it tastes good and it's made by man, I don't eat it. And that has a lot to do with processed foods. Processed foods taste good because they put a lot of chemicals. They put excitotoxins in it. They dye it. They make it smell good. They put colors. They put all kinds of chemicals to make this stuff palatable. One of the biggest culprits of that was cottonseed oil. Cottonseed oil, back in the early turn of the century, was basically a waste oil. It was, it was horrible. Nobody used it. But a company, I think it was Procter & Gamble, figured out that, hey, you know what? If we can take this stuff and deodorize it and decolorize it because it was a really bad color, we can make it palatable. And then we can sell it as vegetable oil called Wesson oil. So this is really a garbage oil, almost an industrial oil, that they figured, hey, if we can get this to actually smell and taste good, we could dump this on the public. And that's where it came from, vegetable oil. And it must be good because it's from vegetables. No, it's not. It's horrible for us. Not only that, they duped us again. They said, hey, you know what? Women like to use lard a lot in their cooking. 
what we can do is take this and we can modify it even more. Women are really into using lard in their cooking. We can make this look like lard by adding hydrogen to it. Okay? And if we add hydrogen to it, we can now make it thick. We can make it spreadable. We can make it to where they can scoop it out and put it in their frying pan and cook with it like lard. We'll sell it like crazy and their sales skyrocketed and our health declined. So avoid processed foods because not only that, it also messes with the integrity of your gut and your gut, as we all know, your gut health, your gut microbiome is so important to your body's overall health. Eating soluble fiber. Eating soluble fiber can help improve your gut health and may protect against obesity. So once again, help make your gut healthier. Because not only that, think of what happens when your gut's not healthy. You can get leaky gut syndrome. You can get Crohn's disease. You can get ulcerative colitis. You can get a lot of different problems. All of a sudden you become hypersensitive to foods. All because your gut has gotten sick. Exercise. What kind of exercise is the best? It's tough to tell unless we do a genetic test on you. Some people do better with high intensity, short duration. Some people do better with low intensity, long duration. I would say overall, if I was to guess, which one is going to help build more muscle, which is going to help you be healthier in the long run, because more lean muscle mass is always better than less, is let's look at two types of athletes. We can look at marathon runners. Well, marathon runners who do low intensity, which means they're at a slow jog, maybe three, four mile jog, and long duration, which means they're running for the next four, five, six hours, maybe longer, compared to a sprinter. A sprinter is going at 100% for about not even 10 seconds. Not even 10 seconds. If they're doing a 40 meter sprint, it might even take them four or five seconds, okay? Or 100 meter sprint. If you're going high burst, short duration, you build more muscle. So if I was to say which one's gonna be better for you, it's typically gonna be more of the high intensity, short duration, more we call burst training. Sleep, poor sleep is implicated in problems with leptin. Once again, sleep is linked to everything. Go back and watch the video I did on sleep and just how important it is and actually you can reduce your lifespan if you're not getting enough sleep. So you wanna reduce leptin resistance, get more sleep. What about lower triglycerides? High triglycerides can prevent the transport of leptin from your blood to your brain. The best way to reduce it is carb intake. Everybody thinks, well, triglycerides, they're fat. It must be coming from cholesterol. It must be coming from the fats in my diet. No, guys. Triglycerides are stored sugars. So if you're taking in too much sugar, your body doesn't know what to do with it. It's like, well, we can't burn it all, so let's store the rest of it and it stores it as triglycerides. So if you wanna lower triglycerides overall, reduce the amount of sugar you take in. Now, just so you know, I'm not just talking about table sugar. I'm not talking about the white stuff. I'm talking about sugars overall. Your dirty sugars as well as your good sugars. Just because you know, you're know you eating your healthy whole grains, that's not good sugar either, okay? Many of those are implicated to many, many health problems. But having things like your complex carbs are still going to break down to sugars. So the more sugar you eat, the more you're going to have triglycerides, the more leptin resistance you're going to have. Eat protein. Protein is probably one of the best things you can do, but you do have to be careful. Excess protein can be converted to sugars, can be converted to glucose with something called, or the process we call gluconeogenesis. So you have to be careful. Too much protein is not a great idea, but it does have a high thermal effect. Okay? So that means it costs a lot to burn it, right? So you're burning up a lot of calories. So eating plenty of protein can cause the automatic weight loss, which may result from improvement in leptin sensitivity. All right, guys? So there you have it. You want to stop struggling with weight. You want to start to burn that fat rather than store it. Start to look into your leptin. You want to see if your leptin is a problem. When you figure that out, you want to start to do the things we talked about here. Avoid the things that cause leptin resistance and start implementing the things that reverse it. Or even if you don't know if leptin's a problem, I would do these things anyway. All right, guys. Well, I love and appreciate you. I hope you got a lot out of this video. Like I said, tell other people, get them to this channel so they can learn valuable health tips that may save change and transform their lives. And you know what? You don't even have to risk your own life to do that. All right, guys. Take care. I love and appreciate you. God bless. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Hey guys, I just want to take a moment to speak with you. 
You know, so many of you are struggling, you're suffering, whether it be with weight loss or weight issues, you're struggling with diabetes or heart disease or any other type of metabolic disorder. Well, you're not alone. Right now, there's over 133 million people who are struggling with diabetes or prediabetes. More than 78% of our population is overweight, and the majority of them are actually obese. Well, the guys, there's no shortage of information out there. There's information everywhere. In fact, it's daunting. It's like drinking water from a fire hose, and you're thinking, I don't know what to believe. I don't know what's out there, what's true, what's not true, who to believe, who not to believe. And actually, it's so much information, it's so hard to process. But the important thing to realize is, although there's information out there, there's no transformation. There's so much information. We have things you can Google, you can YouTube, you can look up anywhere. There's no shortage of gyms, yet we still have so many of our population that is sick and struggling with health issues with no answers in sight. And once again, like I said, there's information, but no transformation. And guys, it's all about transformation. And that's what we'd like to do for you, is to help you transform your body, to help you live the life that God created you to be. So many of you have a sole purpose that you know you're not fulfilling because you don't feel well, or your head hurts, or your body aches, or you just don't have enough energy to take on the day. Well guys, what we're offering you is opportunity to get some help. Don't try to figure this out on your own. There's so much information. It's so hard to figure it all out on your own. Well, you don't have to. If you want more information about how we can help you, just click the link down below. I put a link in the description box that'll take you to a webinar. You can watch the webinar, and if it makes sense to you, if it resonates with you, if it vibes with you, and if you really feel it's in your heart to, to look into it further, at the end of the webinar, it gives you an option to schedule a call with me. We'll get on a call, we'll laugh, we'll cry, we'll find out what's working and not working in your health. We'll find out what your health goals are. Really, where do you wanna go with your health if you can have optimal health? And if I can help you achieve that, I'll show you what that looks like. If not, that's okay too. I'll do the best I can to steer you in the right direction as to what serves you the best. But it all starts with you raising your hand, clicking the link and going to the webinar, and then scheduling a call. From there, like I said, we'll figure out if we can help you. If not, my goal is to give you clarity, but more importantly, to give you the next action steps that you need to be taking to regain your health. So guys, I look forward to speaking with you. I love and appreciate you, and I hope to speak to you soon. Bye-bye.